Well, welcome back to World Religions. Today we are going to talk about Zoroastrianism. We talked last time about the Baha'i faith, which is more of a modern mon monotheistic religion. Uh, but now we're going to jump back uh, to a earlier period between Judaism and Christianity at the Persian period while Jews were in captivity and Babylon and then the Persians took over and the Jews were in captivity under the Persians until they were released to go back and rebuild uh, Jerusalem and their temple. So Zoroastrianism occurs during this time period, during the Persian uh, time period. So we're going to look at that today. So let me share the screen with you and we shall get started. This right. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, Zoroastrianism uh, is the uh, worship of the monotheistic god uh, Ahura Mazda. And we'll learn more about Ahura Mazda as we go along here. Yeah, this uh, were. This exists in uh, the Persia area, area of Iran, uh, like that. This started out, an Aryan migration began in, from Europe to, to India in the Persia area around 1500 BC. And this is also the source of Hinduism later on. Uh, but also uh, when they come into the Persian area, they have, uh, it's polytheistic as well. But it's during the later time period after their migration that uh, Zoroaster comes along in 628 to 551 BC. These dates you gotta take it with a grain of salt, but uh, uh, that is uh, a fairly scholarly guess. And uh, it, a lot of it takes place during the Achaemenid uh, period, or we would call it the Persian period. Uh, 558 to 330 BC. You have Cyrus the Great. Uh, his dates are 600 to 530 BC. Give you some kind of uh, uh, ability to picture this maybe in your head. Uh, during this period, uh, Aryan period, you had a lot of animal sacrifices. Fire had a sacred aspect. Uh, you had in India, you had divas uh, or devas in Iran. Um, beings that were worshipped, or uh, we might say gods of some sort uh, and some level. And the root word div come to shine, uh, that way the shiny ones, the divas. Uh, English word, we kind of get the word divinities or deities from. There's basically uh, two types of spiritual beings, uh, the divas, and then they get the azuras. In India are Asura Ahuras in uh, Iran. And, and these are lesser gods that they had. And so the, during this time period, you had a lot of that going on. Uh, they, they worshiped the divas. Uh, they had Mithra, a god of truth and light. And, and in India, it was called Mitra. Intar or uh, Varathranga. Thonga, a uh, god of war, war and worship. Uh, Indian was Indra. Uh, but behind all this was monotheism, as we talked about in an earlier uh, lecture, that uh, original monotheism is the source of uh, most of these religions. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, these divas. Uh, uh, originally were from one single god known as in the Indian sources as Dias Pitar, father god. In Persia, Iran area, he is Uruana or Ahura Mazda, which is interesting because that's Zoroastrianism, uh, the god for Zoroastrianism, which literally means wise lord. Uh, so <clears throat> In these areas, we're going to talk mainly about Persia now, not India, but in Persia, they had a professional priesthood and priests who uh, knew the secrets of the worship of the gods. 
and uh, so forth. And they use uh, various formulas and proper methods to do it. They call magi, which you hear about in the New Testament uh, coming to visit, carpens uh, as well. <clears throat> but it's during this time that a certain person comes along called Zoroaster. Uh, that's his Greek name. Uh, Zarathustra is his Persian name. His dates uh, are 628 to 551 BC. Uh, he would be a contemporary like in the Bible, Jeremiah and Daniel, some others. Uh, uh, the, there's a lot of tradition around him. How much is true is hard to know. But basically, it looks like he left his family at age 20 and became a priest among many priests in Persia for the gods. Um, but he was known for his meditation and officiating at sacrifices. But at age 30, he had his first vision from God. Uh, and in that he ascended into heaven out of the body and stood before Ahuru Mazda and was instructed to teach what he was told from that time forward. He would have six more visions in the next eight years. Well, this uh, changed uh, his understanding as a priest and uh, he would be focusing uh, on just talking about the one true God, uh, Hura Mazda, and he was thrown in prison for, by the priestly order for all his teaching. Uh, but he came to the notice of King Histippus uh, when the king's horse, he was in prison, but the king's horse fell ill. He was able to heal the horse, uh, the, you know, the tradition says. And so uh, King Histippus, uh, he, uh, he kind of got behind uh, Zoroaster, and he so he had some protection now. But uh, his the movement, the Zoroastrian teaching, really it wasn't a large conversion to it, uh, but still he had a significant uh, fo following. He was uh, killed uh, while kneeling before a fire altar, and so that's how he met his. Uh, deaths probably by somebody hired by the priests. Um, there was a collection of uh, holy scriptures uh, called the uh, Avesta, uh, composed of different writings from different times. The main body of writings called the Yasna is made up of other writings like the Gathas, hymns by Zoroaster, uh, but there was a lot of other writings and some of these go quiet late, uh, and, but are still considered part of the body of uh, scripture for Zoroastrianism. Uh, but in the return to um, monotheism, uh, uh, Ahura Mazda taught uh, uh, to be the supreme, Ahura Mazda was thought to be the supreme God and only God worthy of worship. Uh, divas, uh, which you'll hear as we go along occasionally, are evil spirits not to be worshipped. Uh, but also God worked through the Spinta Mainu, uh, which we might say Holy Spirit, some kind of spirit in which through which he uh, worked. Uh, but he also manifested himself in uh, six, uh, what they call Emesha, Spintas, uh, sometimes translated holy immortals. Uh, sometimes people even call them something like archangels or something like that. But uh, there's scholar debate exactly what they are. But uh, it looks like they're probably rep representations of various attributes of a Huru Mazda and not separate beings. And at least one scholar puts uh, attributes these. The, the six Amish spentas as attributes of Ahura Mazda, uh, who is the wise Lord. And he says, it must never be forgotten that all these six are not different beings, nor even the creations of, of the Supreme. They are in truth aspects of Ahura Mazda. And so uh, when, you, when these are talked about, uh, you have here their names right here. And uh, this one is attribute of truth and justice, wholeness, integrity, health, and completion, good mind, intelligence, good thinking, holy, uh, holy serenity, 
uh, and uh, deathlessness and immortality, righteous power, peace, and democracy. So you you have all these in here, and uh, uh, you know, but you'll find that there's a bit of discussion still among scholars as to you know what these represent, but. Uh, this seems to be a good way to uh, look at it. Um, so, uh, you know, who Maza had the characteristics of God of original monotheism. Um, his name, uh, Wise Lord, uh, gives you some idea. And then he's creator of all that exists. He's all knowing. Uh, he's the author of the standards of right living by which people must live. And so he really fulfills a lot of what uh, monotheistic God is all about. Evil spirits um, are a part of uh, this. They are called Angra Manu. Uh, they are opposed to Ahura Mazda. They basically seek to divert people from following the commands of Ahura Mazda. You can see this uh, in the New Testament uh, as well. Evil spirits uh, are talked about there. Uh, some have uh, questioned whether it's a dualistic religion in the sense of uh, good versus evil, and that the good and evil are of equal power. And uh, and really, there might be a tendency that way sometimes in certain time periods of uh, of Zoroastrianism. But uh, mostly, uh, that good and evil is a conflict. There is a conflict, but Uhuru Mazda is, uh, is much uh, more powerful above uh, the evil. Uh, but still, believers can be swayed, just like with uh, what the Bible teaches about Satan tempting people and so forth. Uh, so Zoroaster's teachings were not really dualistic in that way. And Angra Mainyu is inferior in power and wisdom. Uh, so, you know, but you will sometimes see stuff on it being very dualistic. Um, so uh, Angra Mainyu is, is really derived from God, just like Satan. It seems like in the Bible that Satan was an angel, probably, that was created by God who rebelled, but uh, we don't have any of that kind of information on, on remind you. Um, um, later descriptions say he's the offspring of some sort, uh, but he fits the role of Satan in Judaism and Christianity and Islam, it's very similar to that. Uh, Hura Mazda uh, uh, will win the war, there's no doubt about that. But the outcome for a particular person may be in doubt depending on their choice, whether they follow Uhuru Mazda, uh, can they follow the truth, in other words, Asha, or will they follow the lie, Drudge. Uh, and uh, so in the end, uh, Uhuru Mazda will win, but humans can still choose not to follow him. Uh, but the truth, if they follow truth, it leads to reward here on earth and in heaven. Uh, those who support the lie uh, receive punishment. Uh, Zoroaster's teaching that, uh, was uh, opposed to uh, certain things that had been in use in uh, rituals uh, in uh, the priestly order. Uh, there was a drink used by priests for mystical experiences and even thought to convert immortality and later even got deified. But um, uh, that was uh, uh, Homa, and uh, you know, but uh, that one's going to be taken out. So Astra didn't uh, thought that was not appropriate. Uh, they he did keep the centrality of fire as representing truth and purity and worshiping God alone. And there's what's called the fire ritual as part of their act of worship, which takes place in the fire temples, which we'll talk about uh, later. Uh, during the uh, Achaemenid uh, dynasty, the Persian period of 558 to 330, uh, not Zoroastrianism didn't ha have a was not implanted as a large scale movement. Uh, 
And uh, eventually, after Zoroaster's death, uh, the custodianship of it uh, went to the Magi's. Um, and, but it also kind of Ahura Mazda got incorporated into a pantheon of other gods. And um, so we have little information about the Magi. There's not a lot known, but uh, you do remember that some Magi came from the east, which is, would be the east to, uh, to Bethlehem. Uh, and, uh, you know, visit the Christ child. And, uh, but uh, they did uh, remove the sacrificial system, but they kept the use of Homa, uh, the Homa drink. And so throughout various time periods, Zoroastrianism has ups and downs, and there's even been some changes in theology as far as whether we like not keeping the sacrificial system, keeping the drink, but later throwing out the drink uh, and things like that. Um, you do have a decline in Zoroastrianism uh, during this time period. It degenerates uh, towards increased rituals and magic, magic meaning uh, they use uh, magical spells and uh, things to, to uh, manipulate God and things like that. Uh, and uh, so leadership was really lacking in some of this time period. Uh, you do have the Achaemenid kings like Cyrus mentioned in the Bible, Xerxes, Artaxerxes, Darius. Um, they probably did recognize Ahura Mazda as a leading god among the many gods. Uh, Cyrus the Great it specifically states he worshipped, uh, he was a worshiper of Marduk. And, uh, and so th they would have had you know, uh, more of a polytheistic view of things, although they may have preferred one god over another. Polytheism, that's henotheism, they make one god superior to the others. Um, but uh, after the Achaemenid period, you get into the Greek period in which uh, now Alexander the Greek has conquered that part of the world. And during this time period, uh, Zoroastrianism was pretty dormant. Uh, probably didn't, there wasn't any real leadership of it. What did exist was just probably the, those who were Zoroastrians practiced whatever they could along uh, wherever they were at. You do see the cult of Mithra uh, seems to hold some of the ideas of uh, Ahuru Mazda. Very popular, especially later in the Roman soldiers. Uh, uh, he was seen as supreme god that all other gods worship, even Ahura Mazda in that case. And uh, it was symbolized by the invisible sun. But uh, uh, so this time period, Zoroastrian is not very strong. Um, the dynasty of the Persian kingdom in 8226 until the Muslim conquest in 637. Uh, this would uh, be uh, a, the time period in which uh, there would be an increase uh, in Zoroastrianism. And this was when uh, 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 Zoroastrianism would be at its prime. And you had the collection of the scriptures, uh, Vesta are completed. The polytheistic parts that kind of have crept in uh, were removed. Ahura Mazda uh, is called now Orm Mazda uh, and is the supreme uh, deity. There is still this recognition of other deities, but they're inferior uh, to uh, uh, Orm Mazda. And um, there's lesser spirits are also the evolved angels and evil spirits, divas, are also recognized at this time period. Well, there was uh, there were at times the tendency towards that dualism again, that, but this time Angra Manu now is called Ahriman, uh, and but still theoretically he is inferior. Uh, uh, but you get some of this stuff coming in that uh, seems to make him more powerful because he can create, and he kind of creates a counter uh, creation. Uh, he has his own evil spirits, uh, Amish Spentas, uh, which is, uh, you know, s supported uh, by the divas, evil spirits. 
Um, but in essence, the, there, even though there was a tendency towards that strengthening of the evil side and towards a dualistic view, uh, that um, doesn't stay. Uh, ritual purity becomes more important. Uh, and this is during the Sassanid dynasty. Uh, and, uh, you know, so they use ritual purity to ward off evil spirits. Uh, so their main concern ends up being rituals and uh, magic uh, occurring. Well, uh, then you get to the Muslim conquest. Uh, they, uh, they conquered Iran in the seventh century. Uh, they, as Zoroastrians, because they believed in one God and they had scriptures uh, to, about that one God, they were theoretically protected as people of the book, according to the Quran. Uh, but that's theoretical in practice. It probably didn't turn out that way. It certainly hasn't in modern times. Uh, but Zoroastrianism was oppressed in practice, and, and they were called infidels and unbelievers because they didn't follow Islam. Uh, they began to call themselves the Zardashtins or the Iranists. Um, some moved to Bombay and became known as the Parsis, and that's the word you, today that uh, is, uh, uh, they're descriptive. Uh, they call themselves Parsis. And so uh, this is moving us more into uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, contemporary uh, uh, Zoroastrianism. Um, uh, they're not very big. Uh, outside of Iran, it's estimated about 200,000. Inside Iran, 18,000, despite the fact they're highly persecuted uh, by the, uh, the Shiite majority in Iran. Uh, so the name, Parsis religion is for today. Uh, they do have houses of worship, uh, the Parsis temples. There's uh, like one in Nairobi. I think that's a picture of the one in Nairobi. Uh, Toronto and Chicago. Uh, and other places. Uh, they're mainly limited to one ethnic group, and they're, they're not evangelistic. They don't really try to convert people to their religion because they keep it within their own ethnic group, and they're afraid that it gets out of their ethnic group that might contaminate uh, the religion to some degree. Um, located uh, originally, uh, as we look at it, at its connection to the Bible, uh, located in ancient Persia, Iran, and Iraq area. Um, it's not mentioned in the Bible by name. Uh, uh, Persian kings uh, were not Zoroastrians uh, and probably not mon monotheistic, although you see references like to the, almost the God uh, in there, even in the words of Cyrus. Uh, but it, it does, did indicate some understanding of other deities. They, they apparently recognize the deity of the Jews uh, and probably just lumped uh, that God of, uh, you know, the one true God with all their other gods and goddesses. But they, they wouldn't want to disrespect any God, so they would show respect to God. Uh, and so um, you got... Uh, things being mentioned by Cyrus and Artaxerxes and uh, uh, Darius, you know, and uh, I just took a sample here, let's see, uh, uh, Ezra here, uh, and uh, Second Chronicles, uh, you got uh, Second Chronicles, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the, the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all the kingdom and put it in also into writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kings of the earth hath the Lord God, notice that Lord God of heaven given me. Now, you know, Lord God is very familiar to terminology to saying that so is that the God of the Jews. Uh, you know, and, but it wouldn't be beyond his thinking you know, to think of other gods as Lord God. Uh, but uh, it is, Bible is saying, though, it's the actual real Lord God that is 
uh, giving, putting this on his heart to do. And he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is there among all, you all of, of all the, his people, the Lord his God with him, and let him go up. And so you've got the Lord God involved here in what Cyrus is saying. In Ezra, you, it's, he says, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all the, his kingdom and put it uh, also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has, has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. So notice they're recorded in two different places, but again, the idea of the Lord God in, of heaven is used. And so we do see some connection there. And uh, uh, you look at other passages that, uh, as, as well that will, you can see the use of that. Uh, you remember also that it's uh, the Magi will later uh, visit uh, the Christ child and uh, they come from this area. So there is some connection, you know, biblical connections to understanding, uh, you know, Zoroastrianism in that time period, but that monotheism was there, the Jews are making it known, and then you also had the uh, Zoroastrian teaching. And it's most probable that the Zoroastrian teaching was influenced by Judaism, uh, not the other way around. Uh, Judaism was being before uh, Zoroastrianism, and uh, they were in captivity already by the time Zoroastrianism would be get, getting. So it's more likely they picked up some of the things from Judaism on monotheism from Judaism. All right. Uh, so, uh, so out of all the religions connected in the Old Testament, New Testament, only Zoroastrianism re remains alive. So if you look back and look at the worship of all the different gods and goddesses, really, uh, Zoroastrianism, uh, even though it's small, is still alive uh, today. Uh, even if you look in, it's interesting, one of the passages about Cyrus you know, called a god his Messiah or anointed, and Cyrus also called my shepherd by God um, in Isaiah. So interesting how God is using uh, that leader in that time period. Uh, but uh, some of the doctrinal influence of Judaism are seen uh, like with the source of evil, Satan instead of God, uh, angels, demons, savior idea, final resurrection, judgment, paradise in the future. Uh, all enter into some of the doctrinal teachings of, uh, of Zoroastrianism. Uh, Zoroastrians believe uh, that the elements are pure and that fire represents God's light and wisdom. Uh, they place uh, less emphasis uh, on rituals, uh, ritual worship. And instead, they focus uh, mostly on ethics and they they have uh, they like to say good words, good thoughts, good deeds, and so this is a, this points towards you know that they obeying Guru Mazda is to say you know these are this is how you're to live. Uh, Zoroastrians traditionally pray five times a day. Some wear a kusti, uh, which is a cord knotted. Uh, three times uh, to remind them of the maxim, good words, good thoughts, good deeds. Uh, they wrap the kusti around their outside of their sudra, which is a long, um, clean white cloth type of shirt. And uh, so they, and, uh, they, they may engage in various purification rituals, such as washing of hands, then untie and retie this uh, um, cord, knotted cord, uh, while they're reciting a prayer. Uh, and uh, prayers are usually invocational, calling upon and celebrating Ahura Mazda uh, and his good essence uh, that runs through everything. 
uh, prayers are said to uh, while facing the sun, uh, fire, or other sources of light, representing the Uru Mazda, uh, you know, representing are there to represent divine light and energy. Uh, this picture is here, the prayer area. Um, here's an example of uh, one of the sacred fires. Uh, Purification is strongly emphasized in Zoroastrian rituals. Zoroastrians focus on keeping their minds and bodies and the environment pure in the quest to defeat evil. Angra, mind you. Uh, fire is seen as a symbol of uh, purity. The sacred fires are maintained in the fire temples, agaris. Um, these fires uh, rep represent the light of God. And uh, as well as telling them to illuminate their mind uh, to following Uhur Mazda. And uh, they, these fires are to be kept going all the time and never to be uh, extinguished. Um, uh, you know, and no ritual or ceremony is performed without the presence of that sacred fire. So that is a central aspect of uh, Zoroastrian meme today. And uh, just to finalize here, you got, here's an example of a fire temple. Uh, I believe this one is in Iran, uh, in Iran. And uh, you can see the symbol up here on the temple. And uh, down here is a picture of a, you know, a ritual in, the, in that fire uh, temple going on. Well, that brings us uh, to the end of uh, it's a very short and summary of uh, Zoroastrianism. And uh, so we will begin next time. We'll be looking at some traditional religions, African traditional and Native American in the upcoming videos until we move into uh, the area of uh, more uh, uh, quite different uh, religions than uh, monotheistic religions. Uh, uh, Western Eastern religions like Hinduism and Buddhism. So uh, until then, uh, I'll bid you good day and uh, we'll pick up uh, on the next ones later.